Renewable energy technologies do have no need for any kind of fuel but on the other hand they do require materials, that in some cases are scarce or strategic. Let's find which are those materials, which is the cost or impact associated with them and where we can find them. At Energy Technology Sherpa, we want to bring you this channel to get acquainted in technologies and investments in the energy sector. Primarily clean energy technologies, Sherpa, is a key concept as we want to be the right companion for you in a journey that is difficult somehow. Stay with us and let's find how we can source the raw materials required to deploy a clean energy transition. Let's start with wind energy. Most of the materials used in a wind turbine are concrete, steel and cast iron. Relative quantities may be different if we compare onshore, offshore fixed bottom or floating solutions. They are important in terms of the CO2 footprint but do not represent a challenge in terms of supply even though pricing does play a role. The wind industry weight, in the global consumption of these materials, is limited and sourcing is not concentrated. Concrete is used in the foundation of the onshore wind turbines, in the gravity-based solutions for bottom fix, in some floating platforms and in the anchoring of the mooring systems to the sea base. Some wind turbine towers are using concrete solutions. Steel, in different kinds of alloys and qualities, are mainly used for the foundation, towers, shafts, gears and mounting plates. Additionally, in the offshore side, they are used in jackets, monopiles and some floating solutions. On the high-performance steel alloys, we can also find chromium, nickel, manganese, and molybdenum and cast iron is mainly used in some bulky structures like the rotor hub or the mainframe within the nacelle. Aluminum is spread through different elements in small quantities, especially in the generator and some fixtures in the tower and nacelle. Either the raw material, or the semi-processed or totally processed goods can travel with no major difficulties and none of them are concentrated in some specific regions. So, sourcing and delivering will be driven by market conditions. All these materials represent more than 95%, no matter we are talking onshore or offshore applications, and in most of the cases the expected annual consumption for a 100 gigawatts per year deployment is well below 2% of the global annual production for those materials. So, where is the Achilles heel? Let's take a closer look into the remaining 5%. Which are the materials within the remaining 5%? Basically, key materials for the core elements of the wind turbine. So, let's investigate the rotor, the generator and all the electronics. In the rotor, both for the nose cone and the blades, and in the nacelle cover we find composite materials. Most of the cases are glass fiber composites although in some advanced blades we can also find carbon fiber. Fibers, either glass or carbon are not depending on critical materials but production is concentrated because production scale is relevant. When talking about glass fiber, half of the global production is placed in China. Carbon fiber is mainly placed in US and Japan. As per today's technical requirements, carbon fiber price does not pay for the advantages in terms of weight and mechanical properties, so its use is limited to very specific purposes. Boron is used both in the fiberglass fabrics and in the high power magnets of some generators. Boron production is not critically placed although the main concern is how fast consumption is ramping up tied to the fiberglass use. Moving into the electrical side of the wind turbine, copper is widely used. Even though quantities required account for less than 2% of the global production there is a fierce competition for the use of it. Mines are not placed in troublesome areas but the competition for its use is driving up prices. This is causing the wind industry to investigate alternatives to reduce its consumption. Worth to note that the main extraction of the mineral is in Chile whilst the main processing is done at China. Depending on the generator technology, different kind of rare earths are used. Most common rare earths used in the wind energy sector are neodymium, dysprosium, praseodymium and terbium. These materials are the real Achilles heel of the wind energy sector. Close to 60% of the extraction of those materials are placed in China, and in addition China has invested in several mines around the globe. 
Because of that, China is processing close to 90% of rare earths and so, controlling the market. This is not just affecting the wind energy sector. All in all, the demand from the wind energy sector may exceed 4% of the annual global production. Main challenge is that other green sectors booming just now, like the electrical vehicles industry, may stress the market. As in any business, risks and threats are also an opportunity. Access to some materials is key for the wind energy sector to achieve current market outlooks. So, this is opening an opportunity for those investing in material production capacity, or bringing alternative material solutions into scene, or developing a viable way of recovering and recycling used materials as we discussed for the blade case in one of our previous videos. Hope you have enjoyed this video and has provided you new insights into one of the very important points for this type of energy. As always, we would like to provide us your comments and views so we can enrich further the knowledge we want to gather with all of you. Thanks for watching.